In this short video, we're going to talk about surface enlargement as a method of improving heat transfer. In heat exchanger, surface enlargement is used on the side where the medium has a low heat transfer coefficient. Sometimes the heat transfer coefficient is low on both sides, and then surface enlargement may be used on both sides. So when do we have low heat transfer coefficients? I think the easiest way to remember that is to think about the following question. Would you rather spend 10 minutes in a sauna at 90 degrees Celsius or in a swimming pool where the water is 90 degrees Celsius? The answer is simple, right? You would die in the swimming pool, but might even enjoy staying uh, in the sauna. The reason for this is that the heat transfer coefficient of liquid water is much higher than the heat trans transfer coefficient for air. This is the reason why you see surface enlargement in this car radiator and this intercooler. The car radiator uses outer air to cool a cooling liquid that in turn cools the engine. The intercooler uses outer air to cool hot compressed air and then the cold compressed air is then used in the engine to burn the fuel. Surface enlargement is also used in computers to cool down the processor. The heat from the processor is transported through conduction to a piece of metal called the heatsink that has a much larger area than the processor. Usually a fan in the computer increases the airflow across the heatsink such that the heat transfer coefficient increases and heat is transported away and out from the computer. A downside with having a fan in the computer is that the computer becomes noisier. As a solution to that problem, Apple released the Power Mac G4 Cube in the year 2000. This computer had a huge heatsink in the middle that was cooled down with natural convection. Air was taken in at the bottom and the fact that the heatsink was slightly warm ensured the movement of the air through the computer. The Cube never became successful and the later version of the Cube had a rather de silly design flaw. The main processor was was cooled by the huge heatsink, but the computer also had a graphics card with a fan. Even modest use of the computer made that fan go crazy because the air mostly circulated inside the computer. A do-it-yourself fix to that problem was to create an air channel using a metal sheet from a soft drink can. This actually worked surprisingly well. What you see on this rather unsharp old picture is my fix of a computer that belonged to a friend of mine. 